Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. My name is Carola, and in today's video, we are exploring the 9th arrondissement. So, this video is a collab with my friend Kyla over here. Hi. And so, what exactly are we doing today? So, in the 9th arrondissement of Paris, it's uh, the opera area, and many famous composers and musicians and artists of all kinds have lived in this area. So I wrote up a blog post with all of these different locations and it's just a, an interesting walk through Paris basically, uh, discovering the history. I linked the blog post down below and you can also see all the places that we went to, but in the blog post there are a few more that you can discover on your own with addresses and everything. So if you're doing the whole tour and follow all the blog posts, then it will take between one hour and one hour and a half, depending on how much you're stopping. So we're on the Boulevard de la Madeleine, and in this apartment, if you know the opera La Trabiata by Verdi, there's the character of Violetta, who's the main character, and the real-life inspiration for her lived here. Her name was Marie Duplessis, and she was a courtesan and had lots of uh, very fascinating things that happened in her life and quite a tragic life story too. One of her lovers was, I think he was a baron, and he paid for her to live in this apartment. So it's the one with the balcony and the statues holding it up. So this is where Jacques Offenbach lived. He was a composer known mostly for his comic operas. Uh, which is no surprise because he was quite a prankster. He moved here from Germany to study at the conservatoire when he was quite young, but he got too bored and um, ended up leaving there quite early on. And uh, in some of his positions, as a cellist actually, rather than a composer, his payment got um, reduced because of the pranks that he played sometimes. And one of his most famous uh, works is uh, the Tales of Hoffman, which was a, a, different, um, a different style for him, but he actually never finished it either. He died before he could complete it. He wrote most of it here as much as he did complete, and he wrote enough of it so that other people who knew him well and understood his style could complete it for him, and the rest is history. Now it's one of the most famous works in the operatic repertoire. So we're at the number two Rue de la Chaussée d'Antin, which is where the composer Rossini lived. But uh, he didn't compose most of his famous works, like the Barbara Seville here. Here he composed a lot of small pieces, which he called his Péché de la Vieillesse, which is uh, Sins of Old Age. And he had very famous soirées here, where people had amazing food. Some of it was prepared by him, and some of it by famous chefs at the time and they obviously enjoyed his music as well. This was one of his two residences, the other one was in Passy and so they had different locations for these, for these parties. As you can probably see from the sign, the composer Wagner stayed here, he didn't actually live here. He was there while the opera Tannhäuser was being produced in Paris and it was not a good time. Wagner complained a lot about the weather here and things were going wrong with the opera production and just it wasn't a great time for him. But uh, he was here and he was a very iconic composer so there's the sign to memorialize that. We're at the number 20 Rue Jean-Baptiste Pigalle. The composer Chopin and the writer George Sand lived here. They had a relationship which um, Initially, Chopin moved in here to give piano lessons, but that ended up with him actually living here. And they had a, quite an interesting relationship for some time. They lived here and um, they moved to one of the other locations on the walking tour as well. So I highly recommend uh, reading up on their relationship. It was a very interesting artistic relationship of, of this period. This was the location of the Hotel Alevi, which was owned by the Alevi family. They had a composer and a librettist among their family members. The librettist, he wrote the texts for operas by people like Offenbach, for example. But uh, the, the most important person who lived here was Georges Bizet, who was the composer of the opera Carmen. And he was married to one of the Alevi family members, so he lived here. 
So this is where composer and singer Pauline Viado lived. She's not so well known now, but she was a very important figure in um, the artistic life of Paris. Her father was a famous tenor and her sister was a famous soprano, so their whole family were well known. And they hosted many famous artists, composers, musicians. They were a central part of um, the artistic life here, essentially. And uh, some of Pauline's works as a composer are becoming uh, performed more frequently now as well. So maybe in the future she'll be more of a household name than she currently is. The two women who lived here were so important that the Place was named after them. These two were sisters, Lily and Nadia Boulanger. Uh, Nadia was the older sister and Lily was the younger. Unfortunately, Lily passed away quite young, but in her short life, she uh, achieved some great things which no female composer had done before. Nadia lived a lot longer. She lived for multiple decades in this building. She was a composer as well, but she decided that she was better at conducting and teaching and uh, she did some amazing things during her lifetime as well and she trained many of the best musicians from Paris of the 20th century. So why have you decided to do this tour? Well, uh, when I was living in London, I came across some different tours, like literary tours that you could do just at your own pace, and you could find the different historical locations where people had lived and worked. So I looked on Google to see what there was for Paris and found that there wasn't really much for classical music in this area, so I decided to do that. Uh, partially also because I offer classical music immersion um, resources and lessons um, and different things like that. So it's another way of uh, being able to introduce people to classical music. Mm -hmm. Where we currently are is the Rue Chaptal. It's the final uh, street on the tour and there are several different locations here. One is the apartment of the Greek composer Xenakis. One is a uh, kind of secret bust of Beethoven which most people wouldn't know is there unless they're really looking up and the other spot which is marked on the tour is the Musée de la Vie Romantique, the Museum of the Romantic Life and that is the final stop on the tour because it's a good place to go to continue to learn about the artistic life of Paris as you can discover more about some of the people who uh, we've come across along the tour. There is also a little cafe there and a toilet, which is always handy. I hope you like the video and um, please comment down below if you've done the tour or if you're planning the tour the next time you're in Paris. The blog post is linked down below. Thank you so much for showing us around Paris. No problem. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.